All right, so we're going to determine the x and y coordinates of the centroid of the shaded area down in this figure right here. So let's kind of assess what we have here. Well, we have a uh, trapezoid right here on the top of this little rectangular piece with a little semicircle uh, cut through this rectangular piece. And if we notice, our origin is smack in the symmetric plane of this figure. So what does that tell us because of the symmetry when we're cutting through this shape? Well, because of the symmetry, we can safely state that the x-coordinate of our centroid of this entire shape is zero because of symmetry. I'm gonna write that because of Symmetry. Because of symmetry. All right. So we really only need to focus about the y coordinate of our centroid of this composite shape. So let's go ahead and do that. So uh, how shall we divide this up? There are a few ways uh, you can do it however you want. I'm gonna go ahead and make this rectangular piece uh, whole. So I'm gonna make this rectangular piece uh, one. And then I see two triangles here. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna divide these up. Now these triangles have the same properties, right? They both have a height of 75, angle of 45 degrees. So I'm gonna label these as two. This rectangle I'm gonna say is three, and then our semicircular piece I'll label as four. Now let's go ahead and write what our centroid is. So our centroid is gonna be uh, our one plus, now it's two, right? But we have two of these because of the same properties in the y direction, it's gonna be two times two plus three, then minus our uh, filled out area four. All right, let's go ahead and fill in our table. So remember, we said our x coordinate of the centroid is zero, so we can go ahead and actually just uh, cross these guys out, and uh, we can go ahead and put a little line through this, or a couple of lines actually. So do note that we do not need to uh, mess with this these columns because we're only gonna be focusing about the Y coordinate here. So our shape one, I'm gonna go ahead and write two times two because of the same properties. We're gonna be having to uh, multiply uh, whatever we do with this triangle, triangle twice. And the shape is going to, so that's our second shape. And then our fourth shape right here. And I'll put a negative for our fourth shape because remember we're subtracting over here and I'll put a negative on in this uh, piece right there too. All right, so let's go ahead, let's determine the y coordinate of our first uh, shape. So that would be half of this height, 100, so uh, 50. All right, now for our area, let's go ahead and get that. So our area is, a, gonna, is gonna be length times height, it's 100 times, now this, length right here, 60 plus 60 millimeters, that's 120, plus the diameter of this semicircle, which should be 180. So that's, uh, so this whole total length is going to be 300 millimeters if we add all of these together. So then 100 times 300 should result in 30,000. All right, let's go for our second shape. So we have our, uh, it's gonna be one third of this leg right here. So our leg is a distance 75. And we're also adding 100 because remember, we're referencing from the origin to this point. So it's 100 plus uh, one third of 75. So one third of 75 is 25 
plus 100 is 125. Now remember, we're going to be doing that twice. Why? Well, we do it for one shape, and then we do it again for this shape on this side. So we're going up twice. So I'm going to actually put 125 times 2 to help us remember that we're doing this twice. Now let's go ahead and find the area of this triangle. And well, both triangles actually, they share the same properties. So what is the area? Well, we know this length or this height is 75. What is this length right here? Well, we know that because this is a 45 degree triangle, 45, 45, uh, if you remember your geometry, both of these legs are going to be the same length because of the 45 45. Now, if you don't believe me on that, you can do your uh, Sokotoa method, make this uh, tangent 45 equals this length over this length, and you should get 75. So, our uh, area, now that we know our base and our height, is 75 times 75, which is 56. Uh, 25 divided by 2, but we're multiplying that area twice because we're doing the same triangle over here, the same area. So that area is multiplied by 2, and we should get uh, 5, 6, 2, 5. Now this area is for our triangles area t doubled. So for one triangle, it would have been half of this, but for two triangles, it is 5,625. Okay, now that we've gotten that, let's go ahead and cl clean this up just a tiny bit. All right, so now our third shape, let's go over here, it's a rectangle. So what is the centroid of this rectangle? Well, it's gonna be half of this distance plus uh, whatever distance it takes to get to the rectangle. So it's 100 plus half of 75. So 75 divided by 2, that's about 37.5 plus 100. So this is going to be uh, 137.5. And our area of this guy is, well, remember we said that this is these two lengths over here are 75s. So what would make this distance then? Well, we know that this distance is 300. So all we have to do is subtract 300 by uh, 75 twice. And we should get that this length is 150 millimeters. So 150 times 75, that gives us, uh, punch in the calculator, you get, now let me make this decimal more uh, defined. This is 112.50. Okay, now on to our last piece, the semicircle. So the y coordinate of our semicircle uh, remember the formula, so for a circle, in, the, in this direction, it's going to be uh, 4 thirds divided by pi times our radius. And our radius in this case is 90 millimeters. So I'll go ahead, multiply the numerator by 90. So... 90 divided by 3, that's uh, 30. And then 30 times 4 is 120, so this is going to be 120 over pi. And that is the centroid right here, so 120 pi. Or sorry, not 120 pi, but rather 120 over pi. You get the idea. Now the area of this is pi r squared divided by 2 for a half circle. So pi r squared divided by 2. So I'm going to go ahead and write this. So area for a circle is pi, and our radius is 90 squared. And this is all divided by 2. 
So 90 squared divided by 2. So it should be, uh, I don't really have room to write this, but I'll try to write it as best as I can. 4050 times pi. I probably should have made this column a little bit bigger. And I do apologize for that. All right, so now let's go ahead and multiply our y times our a. So let's go ahead and do that. So 50 times 30,000. That's going to be this big number. And I, I would probably put this in scientific notation, but I'm going to go ahead and write the full out number. So uh, 150 and then four zeros uh, following that. So write one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Okay, so now let's do our second area. So 125 times 2 times 500 or 5,625. It's going to be this big number as well. So 1406250. All right, let's go ahead and do our third, third one, th 137.5 times 112.50 uh, and it gives us this value 154.66875 and for this one if we multiply uh, 120 times 4, negative 450, the pi's cancel out, so one it would just be 120 times uh, 4050 should give us a negative error or negative y times a. I have the negative sign already, so 486,000. All right, let's go ahead. Uh, so we need to sum two of these guys here, actually. Uh, let's go ahead and make this one bigger because I know this is probably going to be big. And then this guy. So 30,000. Let's sum the areas first. 30,000 plus 5,625 plus 11, 12, 50 minus 4,050 times pi. And we get this to being... Uh, actually, I will make this even larger because this is a big number. So it's 34, 151.55. And then this sum is going to be 1500000 plus 14. Zero six two five zero one four zero six two five zero plus one five four six uh eight seven five minus four eighty six zero 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 and we get this being three ninety six Uh, seven one two five all right so our y coordinate is just going to be the sum of the y times a divided by the summation of the a's so our y times a we said is this guy right here divided by this guy so 34 uh, one five one point five five. So we get that the y coordinate turns out to being one sixteen point sixteen, and the units are in millimeters. Right, that's the distance up from the origin. All right. So there you have it. That is the centroid of this composite shape. And uh, I think I'm going to finish the, uh, this, this will be the last uh, centroid using composite shapes that I will do. I think 
composite shapes are pretty straightforward. But if you want me to do more examples, just leave me a comment on an example that I should do. And uh, I will do my best to uh, follow up with that and cover that and post it on YouTube. So thank you for watching this series. Uh, in the next series in statics, we're going to be covering second moment of areas. So we'll see you there.